It is officially winter, and even though we're all taking precautions, it is high cold and flu season. Staying hydrated properly is key to helping your body deal with all this stress, and nothing has worked better for myself, my family, my patients than Hydrolyte, the amazing rapid rehydration drink mix you've heard me talk about it for quite some time. I've been obsessed with it. Also, in time for cold and flu season, they have their latest formulation, Hydrolyte Plus Immunity. It's become a huge favorite around this household. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity starts with their fast-absorbing electrolytes and a host of great ingredients. Each single-serving, easy-to-pour drink mix contains 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, 300 of elderberry extract. They've created a great-tasting formula that's high in antioxidants and zinc. Remember, zinc's very important for the immune system. They've combined this with Hydrolyte's seven key electrolytes, making this a fantastic way to stay properly hydrated. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity comes in convenient, easy-to-pour powder sticks that rapidly dissolve in water to make a great-tasting drink that is, has 75% less sugar than your typical sports drink. It uses all natural flavors. It is gluten-free, dairy-free, caffeine-free, non-GMO, vegan. Hydrolyte Plus Immunity is also now available in ready-to-drink bottles at Walmart next to the pharmacy. Or as always, you can find it by visiting hydrolyte.com slash Dr. Drew. Again, H-Y-D-R-A-L-Y-T-E dot com slash D-R-D-R-E-W. And be sure to use the code Dr. Drew 25 at checkout for a special discount. Hey, everyone. Hmm. What's up, My Susan? earbuds aren't working. Hey, ah. everyone. It's a dose of Dr. Drew. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, here I am in my COVID attire. I think I just can't imagine putting a coat or a shirt on yet, but uh, I'm close. Uh, weird day today for me in terms of my recovery. I sort of had a crappy morning, but I took my uh, midday Decadron, and I feel a little bit better right now, so that's good. Uh Again, we're going to have a very interesting guest in here in a minute. Uh, it's I saw him on the internet somewhere. I'm not sure if it was actually uh, on Twitter or it was just uh, somewhere. Uh, I just saw his post, and I thought, this is very interesting. It's Dr. Mark McDonald. He believed that the crisis we are facing is psychological. He asserts that bigger societal problems are confronting are a form of mass delusional psychosis right now. And uh, that was such an interesting construct for me. I thought, we got to get this guy on here and let me talk to him. He uh, also is writing and speaking and traveling since June 2020 with American Public, uh, with with the Americans America's Frontline Doctors Summit. He'll tell us about that. AFLDS.com is where you can find out more. I see you all on the restream here. Gabapentin does work for anxiety. Uh, you're depressed, cinnamon. So am I. Uh, what I, I've. I got to tell you again. The I want. I'm going to talk to him a little bit about my own psychiatric condition in this illness. The uh, hard part has been sitting here being a, I think I've mentioned it on this stream before. Uh, yeah, Andrew Oshkosh, I, I don't think, I think COVID is on in DC. You're going to see a big outbreak there. But uh, I'm a little short of breath, so it's hard for me to talk uh, without gasping in between. Um, I was saying that, again, the neuro effects are profound, that the, the fact that I was a casualty in the field of battle was bad enough, but to see people not able to live their lives in addition to lying in bed super sick and encephalopathic, that was deeply problematic for me. And then today, I would say, is no, no, uh, no, no better watching a bunch of nudniks um, acting out in Washington, D.C. So I'm really glad we're going to be talking to the psychiatrist here today. Uh, so we'll see what people ready? are thinking. Oh, is he here now? Hello. There he is. Hey, sir. How are you? Doing very well. Probably much better us. than you are, Dr. Drew. I yeah, I'm sure you are. You do not got want the Rona. Thing. Get get your vaccine. Get it as fast as you can. And I just I just got my staff vaccinated today. I couldn't get the vaccine, which is just astonishing to me that we were going to allow people with decades of experience that are can help on the front lines to be taken out by this. I but far be it from me to talk about that in a second. Uh, Dr. McDonald, you can follow him at, at MMC McDonald, MD, and uh, talk to us about AFLDS.com, the American Frontline Doctors Summit. AFLDS was uh, founded, organized by Dr. Simone Gold, an ER physician who lost her job uh, back in April of this year after she uh, began prescribing hydroxychloroquine to her patients uh -huh. who came in with coronavirus. And she was uh, told not to do it. Um, she said, well, why not? It's been safely used for 60 years for malaria prophylaxis throughout the country and the world. And it is cheap, it is effective, and it is available. And she was told again not to do it. She continued, and she was fired. 
And since then, she has been traveling the country with a group of doctors, uh, which I am one in multiple specialties, and speaking out on behalf of medical truth and against medical misinformation for all things coronavirus. Well, let's just start. I, I, I've got a million questions for you. I, I didn't know you were part of that group. I just saw your post, and I thought that's an interesting construct. I want to I want to talk about it. And that's sort of what I've been doing generally throughout the coronavirus is just getting people's opinions like we always do in medicine. We share differing opinions. Not only that, I think particularly in psychiatry, you'd appreciate this. I worked in a psychiatric hospital for 30 years. And when a new medication shows up, psychiatrists use it in a hundred different ways, none of which for which there are any placebo controlled trials yet to substantiate the use, but they're trying to help their patients. They have limited pharmacological resources and they start improvising. I, I've, I've, I was on the ground when Prozac came out. Immediately they started using it for bulimia. They started using it for bipolar disorder, it, all kinds of things it did not have the indication for. And no one got in the way of that. That's, I've never seen that before, have you? Never in my career. And to your point, I believe, and I'm, I'm not sure if they had this quote exactly right, but it's around 85, 86% of all DSM-4 psychiatric diagnoses have no, none, zero FDA-approved medications for their treatment. Does that mean we don't treat depression and anxiety and schizophrenia right. and bipolar disorder? Of course not. We treat it all the time, but we treat it off-label. Right, which is what... I mean, why have doctors if we're not used to practicing our our professional art form? Why why even bother with us, right? If we as doctors have decided that we are no longer going to treat a specific disease before it reaches critical ICU status, we are abandoning the ethics of our profession. That is my opinion. I am very, very angry and passionate about this. And I am, to, to, to put it bluntly, I am ashamed of my profession now for the lack of observance of medical ethics in the treatment of this pandemic. And so I'm here today because I got, you know, pretty severe COVID uh, and stayed out of the hospital because of early aggressive treatment and improvisation and a monoclonal antibody infusion and all kinds of stuff that I was pushing for because I knew early and aggressive treatment was important. I, I'm here now because of that. Everybody has access to this. Nobody all insurances, Medicaid, they all cover all of these treatments. It, it, nothing special about what I got. Why aren't the public health officials advocating for this and educating people how to use the system? We should be using telemedicine, not going to the ER. We should be using CORAM, C-O-R-A-M, where, where the nurse comes and does your monoclonal antibody infusion. You should be on Decadron if you're a risk category. It all can be done through telemedicine. You don't have to go expose other people or be seen in the hospital or take up an ER bed or a hospital bed. Do you agree? Completely agree. There is telemedicine available and even on AFLDS.com, you can link up to a telemedicine physician. This is not the only site. I'm just speaking of it because I, I'm familiar with it. And for a small donation of under $100, you can get a prescription for any of these medications that are safe and effective. You can take it home, stay out of the hospital. They have a 60 to 80% efficacy with essentially no risks, no side effects, no dangers, so that you don't have to go to the hospital when you stop breathing and get a $3,800 Regeneron or Remdesivir treatment that has to be done IV before you pray, God, don't go to the ICU and have a 50% mortality rate. It's nuts. Right. Um, Venice Beach, whatever, I didn't quite get your whole, Venice Beach Sports Network, Obamacare covers all this covers it. I, I'm a big fan of the monoclonal antibody infusion, the bamlanivimab, because it really turned my disease around. Mm -hmm. And that's covered by anybody can get it. Your doctor just have to apply. Susan, put the link up there how people can apply for it. Uh, it's in seven cities. It's not everywhere, but yeah, there may be distribution systems in your local area. You have to do a little bit of investigation. But there's literally a backlog of this medication. They thought they were going to have a shortage. They have too much and can't unload it. That's that's our profession failing. You agree? It's a complete failure. Yeah, complete uh, failure. I, I am. I, I'm just beside myself. It's hard to even speak about it. I'm so. I'm so disappointed. Well, you and I, Sonny, you and I feel exactly the same way. So maybe that's why when you pointed out the delusional psychosis we shouldn't seem to be suffering from, I, I thought, oh, that's an interesting construct. Talk to us about that, and then we're going to fold in maybe a little bit about what's going on in Washington. We want to talk. Yeah, we, Washington D.C. today. We, we will. We will. Huge we will. influx of people like what? Are you 
Washington, D.C. We will talk about Washington, D.C. Where, where to start? Yeah, there's like so, many, yeah. so many, so many important topics to talk about today. Yeah, I, but, but, I think this, but I think this delusional psychosis folds mm -hmm. into what we're seeing in Washington today. So let, go ahead. You have at it. Well, <laughs> I'll I'll describe my my thinking, my thought process since uh, March, April, when I first started to become aware of what I saw this um, pandemic source as, which was fear, uh, not a medical pandemic, but a fear pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, which seemed to be driving people's behaviors much more than an actual infection. Right. And over time, over a period of months, I, I started to see something uh, rather disturbing, which was the ensconcement of the fear and the entrenchment of the fear developing, devolving essentially into something more akin to a trauma. Mm. You scratch your arm, it heals. If you scratch it every day, it starts to turn into scar tissue and it never really attains the same level of, of tensile strength of original skin. The psyche is very similar. Uh, people can suffer a certain degree of shock, meaning fear, stress, mm. and they can bounce back. You know, like you bend something, it bounces back. You bend it too far and it breaks, it doesn't bounce back anymore. I started to see people hitting a, a point where they weren't just afraid, they actually believed some of the lies that they were being told. They believed that, for example, it's impossible, it's, it's just unheard of, it's incredibly dangerous to have children at school, that all people are equally at risk of dying of coronavirus, no matter what their age, no matter what their, their health status, that um, you have to uh, stay indoors in order to be safe, that you can't go to work. All of these proclamations that were being spoken of, people started to believe them as being factually true, evidence-based, which none of them are. And when you challenge them, instead of having an argument, well, I read this, you read that, people would actually start to attack you physically or verbally. Or, or, and or threaten violence. I, I get threatened I was, violence just for having these conversations. I was threatened in the bathroom last week in my office. I went into the bathroom, I washed a coffee mug and walked out and a man saw me going to the bathroom and he had one of those giant rubber skeletonized nests with the double filters on the sides like in Nazi Germany. And he said, where's your mask? I said, oh, I, I, don't, I don't wear a mask. And rather than having a conversation, he just cursed at me and said, you don't care about anybody, do you? And then slammed the door into the bathroom. I opened the door and I said, what's, what's the deal with that? And he held <laughs> his fist back and walked towards me and threatened to punch me in the face. This all happened within like three or four seconds. This is happening to people all over the country. This is what I mean by delusional psychosis. And they can't be reasoned with, it's irrational, it's, uh, it's insanity. You know, I worked in a psych ward myself for a residency and I would walk in the door and the door would close behind me and I had a key and a badge. And I'd have to remind myself when I went into the ward, anybody that's not wearing a badge may be insane. Now, when I leave my home in the morning, I have to tell myself anybody that is wearing a mask on their face, walking around outside may be insane. They aren't all insane, but many of them are. And I feel like I'm walking around in a giant psych ward here in Los Angeles, people in cars with masks, people on bicycles, jogging with a mask, barely able to breathe, about to pass out, suffering a heart attack. It's, it's, it's hey, absolute I, insanity. I'm gonna, I am now immune and I'm going to wear a mask. <laughs> I don't want to get into those hassles that you get into. I it it's it is strictly signaling now. It's it's just it's a Absolutely. weird collective <laughs> signal. But Correct. do you do you think so that's one side of the delusional psychosis. I kind of feel like what's going on in Washington is kind of another side of it. I think it's equally crazy to go out in giant groups without a mask and march on the Capitol. I mean that that seems super crazy to me. No? Well, I think we've been getting a lot of mixed messages, and this is why I, I don't really have a lot of faith and trust in what I'm reading and hearing from any real major news organization, as well as from so-called experts, because there's just so many lies. I mean, we've known for months and months and months in early 2020 that uh, mass protests and violence and mobs and arson is perfectly safe as long as it's under the right political banner. Right. If it's not, then it's somehow um, corrosive and evil and destructive. Uh, those both can't be true at the same time. They just right. can't. It's, it's, it's not scientific. It's not rational. Um, I think that one of the problems that I've had with this over, over the last year is that I believe very strongly, because I don't see any evidence to disprove it, that it's, it's simply not true that healthy people are largely giving this virus to other people. Well, let's let's look at my case just to do a little anecdote. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where I got it. I probably got it running around the hospital trying to get the vaccine, which I was mm -hmm. stonewalled from getting. 
I have been around, uh, I've been adjacent to people who've gotten sick, but I've not had any direct exposure. And I did not transmit it to anyone. All my contacts have been checked. I checked all my contacts, and I worked for a news organization that checked everybody. Except in the lockdown in my home, I transmitted to my son. That's my transmission rate. <laughs> was, which is, so my r naught is 1, and it's because of the lockdown. If I had been outside, exactly. that probably wouldn't have happened. But, but that's yeah. not unusual. That's where most of the transmission is occurring, correct? We sat exactly. down to dinner. Like, we never do that. We always sit, like, one of us in one room, and it, it, we sat down on Christmas Eve for dinner, and he sat next to my husband. I got it. Well, Indoors. Or, or, Indoor transmission seems to be the only sort of traceable contact that we have in large numbers, not outside, not outdoors, at least not, not with normal normal activities outdoors. I'm not talking about people fighting on the streets and spitting right. in each other's faces, but walking down the street, saying hello to your neighbor, jogging, hiking, right. sitting and having lunch in a park. These are the things that are illegal now in Los Angeles, California, and, and parts of the country. And so what do we do instead? We don't exercise. We stay inside in closed environments in close proximity <laughs> to other people. It makes no sense. And, and so when I think back at the arc of all this, and it's been quite an experience, and now I have the patient perspective as well as the caretaker and the commentator and all this stuff I've been trying to help people along the way here. Um my original rhetorical excesses, I think, were because what I saw, I saw that delusion, I called it panic porn, being created by the press. Mm -hmm. Think of the words they use, staggering, grim, catastrophic, cataclysmic. And these words were used every day, or still used every day. And, mm -hmm. and I, I kept saying, is it cataclysmic when we have 400 cases in Los Angeles or, or, or 14,000? Which, which is cataclysmic? I can't tell anymore. I, it, it, right. So, so um but back in the early stages when we had zero cases here in the United States, there was an immediate drive to adopt the infectious disease management policies of the Chinese Communist government as opposed to our CDC. And that was really bothering yes. me. I kept saying, just listen to Fauci. I don't know how you feel about Fauci, but I've been a fan of his my entire career. I just said, listen to the CDC. Fauci and the CDC never said close the schools. They never said isolate in place. They never said close businesses. Listen to them. Do what they tell you. We'll get through this. Mm -hmm. Instead, it was this crazy lockdown stuff that the Chinese government was doing. Did that bother you? Absolutely. I have close friends who grew up in communist China or in Hong Kong, which is now basically part of China, Hong Kong is dead. Uh, it will never come back. And very similar movements and moves occurred here very quickly to what had occurred and is occurring in China, like the social point system, for example. The, uh, as uh, our local mayor, Eric Garcetti said back in May or June, snitches get riches, paying people off to turn in their neighbors. This started six, seven months ago here in Los Angeles. And just last week, I, I'm sure you saw the video, a group of uh, six people in Canada had their doors busted in with police with rifles to be arrested on New Year's Eve because their neighbors reported on them. This is how China has maintained control. And I made a point the last two or three months of a third stage beyond fear and delusional psychosis, which is I believe what we've reached now, which is a stage of group control. It's no longer our government that's controlling us, it's ourselves, it's each other. If all of the regulations, laws, restrictions, everything in, in California were to stop today, it would change very, very little in the short term because we have become so traumatized and we have become so inured to the suffering of others and reality that we now perceive it to be virtuous, virtuous to be afraid and virtuous to turn in our neighbors and to scoff at them, to attack them in the streets. We don't need the police to do that. We do it to each other. And... <laughs> So, so how do you're a psychiatrist and, and, and what do we do? How do we treat ourselves? What, what, you know, I, I, I think it is, I think delusion is not too strong a word. I, I think it's, it feels, well, it all strangely to me feels like Trump derangement syndrome. Like, like, like somehow all the excesses were a reaction to this person yeah. uh, and mm -hmm. on both sides. And I'm seeing it on both sides. Mm -hmm. am, am I on to anything there or, or, or what? I have said recently that the only out that I can see from this is a very, very long-term rehab <laughs> for <this> society. <laughs> I've worked with substance abuse and uh, you know, inpatient, outpatient, all, all different types for, for years on and off. And it feels to me like this population of delusional psychotics needs a rehab. 
it's not something that we can just snap our fingers and end. Like I said, if we end all the crazy rules and proclamations and restrictions, it's not going to change the illness in people's hearts and minds. And I don't think a drug is going to do it either. I think it's going to require a really long-term investment of rehabilitation. And I don't know on what scale we can accomplish this. I mean, we're looking at the majority <laughs> of our population in many states. Well, but you listen, I, 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 I scoff a little bit when you say that because I can't even get the really sick people on the street to, <laughs> without, to not die. You know what I mean? I was an ethos that just hand them Suboxone and they'll be fine and let them do what they no. want to do. So we, it's a very strange world we are in. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I wish I were optimistic with you that there could be some sort of long-term rehabilitation. Uh, I Maybe there, you know, things do tend to wax and wane socially. You know, out of the darkest hours comes the light. I mean, maybe we can reprioritize and start to look at our silliness and start to change direction. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing glimmers of that out there when I talk to people, and people suddenly mm -hmm. sort of waking up like realizing the media has been d diluting them, realizing mm -hmm. they can't trust their government, realizing mm -hmm. that they have a derangement syndrome on one side or the other, and they need to get on and, and live and have relationships and do all the things that humans need to do. Yes, I completely agree. Um, I might be somewhat biased because I'm in sort of ground zero here in Los Angeles. I'm here too. New York City. I, I, You're here as well. Yeah, it's we're, we're very close to one another, and you see it, you feel it. Uh, I was just out of the country for a week. I was in... Uh, South Baja, and there are masks, and there are people that uh, had you know, this distancing and inside of stores and stuff. But but the but the insanity doesn't exist down there. No, uh, I was the there fear. too about six two week two mm. months ago. But people want to kill me because I did that, and, and we've been shamed, and, and for <laughs> unfortunately, we've been vacation shamed, and unfortunately <laughs> got COVID from some completely other means. <laughs> but they want me to oh. die, and they want to kill me mm. because I had the temerity to. Go Enjoy to a COVID life. bubble in South... <laughs> and by the way, when we went down to South Baja, there was no COVID down there. Nope. And and, uh, nope. and it was I, if, I, if I hadn't done that, I swear to God, I might have killed myself during this experience. Because yes. that, that's another thing I want to tell you about these. I don't know if you're seeing this, but whatever psychiatric stuff you have, COVID makes a lot worse. Depression. Yes. It's, the but it's exacerbation so of the symptoms. It, it, I completely agree with that. Everything. I, I, my yes. son and I both had COVID. We both are sort of anxious with OCD, and we both were noticing our OCD was going out of control, mm -hmm. going out of control. Yes. Uh, and then the mood stuff of lying in bed as a victim on the battlefield, thinking about all the lives that had been destroyed by the government, was almost. Over, <sighs> I almost couldn't tolerate it. It was. It was a deeply emotional experience. Like I, like I'll mm -hmm. take the bullet. You know, I'll, I'll take it. I'm glad it's happening to me. But the fact that other lives are being destroyed in addition, people who could be living, yes. they're not living. That's too much. It's too much for me. Right. That's why I've said from the beginning, this is a pandemic of fear and mental illness. It is not a pandemic of virus. Sure, there are people dying. I'm not saying that the virus doesn't exist. People are sick. I get that. I don't, shouldn't even have to say this. It's so right, silly. Right, right. But, but. The number of people who are suffering and the number of people who have died, I am convinced, convinced, is far, far greater than anybody that's died of this virus because of the government response to it, the lack or, or of response, let's, the let's poor not, response. Let's not even go that far and just say, let's say it's 20% of the, of, the, of the effects of COVID. That's 20% mm -hmm. too much. Unnes <laughs> that's needless, unnecessary. And if it's Completely 50%, agree. and if it's 100%, that's insane. That's insane. And, and again, as somebody trying to get through the illness it's like it's too much it's just too much to think that that further suffering is being unnecessarily subjected upon the on the american public it's no wonder Absolutely. they're going crazy in washington and i by the way i see a lot of the do you also agree with me that a lot of the behavior in the streets is really covid and the lack of work and stuff and people are just that's what i thought the first time that we had the protest now they were stoked and exacerbated obviously for for other agendas but I believe that the pent up frustration, mm -hmm. rage, uh, suffering, men in particular, men are not meant to sit at home and not work and collect checks. They're meant to be out there working productive. You can't do that. So I think that's what sparked a lot of it in men. Some women too. Yeah, for sure. Well, there's of course, a... I, it's, it's just that there's a, there's a kind of a, a, a testosterone charge that, that, that yeah. gets ex ex exerted when people are productive and working. And when they're not doing that, it just it, it goes to it just goes to hell. And, and there was something unique I, I will look at, I think, in retrospect for what women were experiencing. Just thinking back to the demonstrations in the summer and the women with the bullhorns in people's faces mm. screaming in rage. I, we got to figure out what that 
really where what's all the elements in that because that yeah. that I, those images are sort of also troubling me right now. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, I have a question. I wasn't watching the news, but where was Trump during all of this? He was uh, un, un sort of. Um, I, I will just tell you that he was quieter than people would like him to have been. Uh, he tweeted a little bit, but didn't really call off the, the campaign there. And I thought Biden did a really nice job trying to get up and unify people. He was a little bit inflammatory, but I, I felt relieved when he got up and spoke, and I thought he needed to. So personally, I was happy to see that. Somebody said he was dissing Pence. Bunny was? Well, because he wants Pence to decertify the uh, electoral college thing. Yeah. I, don't you feel... Dr. McDonald, that we need to just get on with things. We need some oh, normalcy goodness. more than anything. The bar is really not that high. Yeah. I think if we were to set a low bar, uh, people would be immensely healthier, happier, functioning. Simple, simple things. Just being able to go back to school, just having children in school. That was the biggest mistake, in my opinion, that was made all year was closing our schools. And that set a domino chain into effect that I think led to where we are now. We've got to reopen our schools. If we could do that, I think that would start a positive uh, resonance wave th- across the country. Well, that would be the first over- step. How do we overcome the delusion? The people have this delusional, I see Wiss Chris saying, please God schools. <laughs> um, the, there is a cl- mm. really a collect. Because I remember when the schools shut down, uh, somebody from our skill board came on my Fox 11 program. I said, are you... Did a physician make this decision? This does not feel like a doctor to me made this decision. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, oh, 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 we're taking input from experts. Blah, blah, blah. I said, Fauci said it was a bad idea. Correct. And the CDC has sure. never recommended school closure. No. And, and what's interesting to me is many of these countries that have big lockdowns didn't close schools. Correct. They didn't close businesses. The lockdown was different, which every country you look at, but very few closed schools because they felt mm-hmm. that was so abusive and so draconian Mm -hmm. and so will have such profound consequence and of course you know in our state our governor closed the schools but then he sent his kids to private school every day Mm -hmm. so i i i just this is where this is where i get over this is where i get emotionally i didn't know that oh yes i think it's three children they're all in private schools so this is where i get emotionally like uh beside myself this is this is now I, i don't know what to do i'm sad i'm I'm upset with my profession. I'm upset yeah. with the. Uh, I I just don't know what, and, and I'm sick. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a little <laughs> short of breath, and I my neurologically I'm not right, and all my psychiatric symptoms are, are He's exacerbated. Been on Twitter all week and, for two weeks, and, and I'm uh, <laughs> I'm tapering you. off Decadron, which trust me is not not a good good time. I'm either. leaving tomorrow. For yeah, a day. I, I don't know how much of the, this is me irritable from that. Right. Yeah, you're gonna be okay, <laughs> honey, but you. Our country is all looking for answers, and I think you know we're all very sensitive, and and we're and now we're all twice as worried with what's going on. Well, let's let's uh, Mark, let's let's construct this from a different angle. G- given we both sort of thought the Trump derangement is part of what's going on here, what is it about that man that has such cr- crazy reactions on both sides? We're watching mm-hmm. it in Washington today, and I've seen it in the streets before. What do you think that is? There's a lot of, of, I think, possible ways to answer that question. I think the most obvious one that comes to my mind, uh, and, and this is you know, not my clinical opinion, it's just sort of my observations about people's emotionality and reactions in, in social society, is that this man, for the first time, has and I'm going to be careful how I say this because I know people are going to attack me for it, uh, but I'll just say it and then I'll backstep. For the first time in politics, this man at an executive level has spoken the truth. Hmm. Now, yes, he lies all the time about little things. <laughs> I totally agree. I get that. I get that. I know people are going, he's a liar. He's a liar. Yes, he is. But about the big stuff, about the stuff that really matters, he has spoken more truthfully, more honestly and I, I don't like this expression, truth to power, but I think here it really fits. He's spoken the truth in the face of tremendous oppositional power and forces, that it is driving people nuts. And I think it drove the media nuts at the very beginning because no one's done that before. Everyone's kowtowed, everyone's compromised, but he, he actually speaks what is true. And except it drives the media when he nuts. doesn't, which is why people get crazy. <laughs> well, sure, and, that, and, and, that's, and that's why I think there's the opposite side, which is people are upset because he's always making crap up about, about little things, mostly things that don't really matter all that much. So I, I get that, um, and that's a fair criticism. Um, but 
the fact that he has been able to, uh, in most cases with the big issues, has been attacked and, and called a liar, but has been borne out to be true in the end on the most of the big stuff, I think is really driving a lot of people in positions of power absolutely crazy. Um, I think that's the first thing that comes to mind uh, in response to that question. Hey, hey, J.H., what do you consider, consider conservative circle jerk? What is conservative about anything we're talking about? Please let me know. <laughs> I, I am I am moderate. I, am, I see both sides as crazy. I see it all delusional. Uh, but I'm just trying to examine it from all sides. And I have a psychiatrist mm. here who has constructed a point of view about this all being a mass delusion. I this think is that is pretty interesting. What's that? This is a conversation. JH, do you like staying on YouTube with us or do you want me to boot you? I, I, I have the power. I have the power. Uh, okay, that fucking. So, okay. <laughs> so. I have Sorry. political opinions, but, but my basic public face is really in support of truth more than anything. Well, that's, that's, that's a, what has been under understand? attack and assault. You if you don't understand? start with truth, then we, we can't have a conversation. Well, you understand that truth has been under assault for quite some Absolutely. time here, and, the, and that the, the post-structural position is truth doesn't exist. And as a scientist, I'm deeply, I, I can't practice medicine then. I can't do it. Nope. Because, nope. because you, as a scientist, there, there is, we, we, have, we have the best approximation of truth we can possibly arrive at, but we have to have our hypothetical frame confirmed and then apply it. That, that's the truth. Uh, is it is it the truth with a capital T? No, that's you know that's we're always striving towards that. But to say that the truth does not exist is a horrific mistake. Horrific. It's 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 just the, it's just the same as saying that uh, there is no biological sex uh, or that uh, an elephant can be a dog. Um, you you have to have a certain a core shared assumption of of words meaning certain things to all people, and if you if you throw all of that out, if you throw out uh, language as being uh, absolute, as being just, well, a word can mean what I want it to mean, um, a fact can mean whatever I want it to mean, then you, you, you lose the opportunity to have discourse, you lose the opportunity to develop an empirical method, which is the accumulation of evidence and testing, and then throwing out what's wrong and keeping what's right. Uh, that's that's a, a recipe for a complete societal collapse, and, and that's kind of where we've been heading for a while. Yeah, Mr. I'm seeing looking at this uh, restream, Mr. Bungle. I'm with you. Uh, I'm I'm sick of both sides. I'm sick of all sides. I I kind of want people to leave us alone to go deal with our families and work and develop our lives and just leave us alone. I mean, that's sort of what yeah. needs to happen right now. And not and that be idea. Of, well, that idea, Doctor Drew, of leaving us alone has has become a uh, a right wing fascist conservative uh, horrible assumption. Now, why is that? I, I don't. I, this is this is what's so insane. This is this is where the the, the sort of delusionality comes in. The idea that uh, people should be left alone to make their own decisions. You know, Thoreau said. I, I quote this frequently because I just think it's so apt. In the last year, he said, "Think for yourself. If you do not, others will think for you, and they will not be thinking of you." There is some movement at foot, and has been for a while, and it's accelerating now. For a small number of people, and I'm not talking about just a political party, I'm talking about a small cadre of people in different positions of power in our country, perhaps around the world, to want to think for us and to not leave us alone, to not allow us to be alone. Because if we were left alone and we were left to think for ourselves, they wouldn't have the power that they're gaining and that they hold on to right now. It would be gone. And I don't think this is a particularly political position. I think that politics has been infused into it. And I think that we are being turned into the useful idiots that Lenin called us back in the, you know, 1917, 1918 in the Soviet Union or, or in Russia before it became Soviet. We are being used to turn ourselves into a tribal class of oppressors and victims to turn on ourselves so that a small group of people can run away with the spoils. That cannot happen if we were left alone, if we were left to think for ourselves. It, it just couldn't. Yeah, and I, I, I'm afraid, I mean... You know, I'm sympathetic to the issues that are flying around. There's no problem with that. But, but the idea of command and control is getting crazy. I mean, I got COVID because I was stonewalled because my papers weren't in order. You know, <laughs> I, 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 you know, this was uh, after he got an appointment. Right. And I, I here I am. You know, I'm injured. I'm sick, and, and I and I can't take care of my patients. And I nearly took a hospital bed. What is our? Wow. What is? 
I, I just don't understand what our end game is. I mean, what, what are we trying to do here? <laughs> what are we trying to get? Uh, I, and part of the problem, by the way, is you were talking about being autonomous, not thinking for yourself. Our educational system really needs work. People are not thinking, uh, not they're too siloed in these in these internet spaces where they think they're getting information, but they're really not trained to think yet. No. I mean, I would thought I would never have to say this, but I believe now that our public school system is beyond repair. Uh, I really don't think that it's possible to fix it anymore. I, um, I've never been a big homeschool advocate, but recently I've actually told parents in my practice, if you can homeschool your children, find a pod, uh, get a charter school or a private school. If you have one in your area that works, there's very few in LA. I agree with but you. I, 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 I mean, just, I, when my repair. daughter was growing up, she was w with a lot of figure skaters that were homeschooled and they came out really well. I mean, I didn't believe in that for my kids mm -hmm. because they were lucky enough to go to a great school, but, but I understand it more now. Um, so let's go back to the delusional psychosis, which is why I called you in here. Um, tell people a little more about what you th see collectively going on. And when you say we are all suffering from a delusional psychosis, re really what you mean? What I mean is that due to the infusion of fear and its maintenance, primarily through electronics at this point, not newspapers, people don't read papers anymore, but through this device called our phone that we carry with us 24 seven that we were, I, I think actually addicted to, people lose their phone and a couple of minutes later they start getting antsy. Oh, listen, I, I have been, while sick, I was sort of encephalopathic. I'd spent hours on the phone doing stuff that just, I, and I wouldn't even have any idea time had passed. It was not good. Susan yeah. said you were on Twitter all week and that was a sign of the illness. No, I was on, I was on TikTok. TikTok. Oh, I TikTok. I was I was banging off the troll. And, and it was it was Twitter. really disturbing. I mean, I, I'd go in these holes and wouldn't come out of, but I couldn't stop because I was so uncomfortable and mm. so encephalopathic and stuff. It just sort of it was like a, you know, a little. Wait, uh, but you found uh, Dr. McDonald on Twitter. Yeah, I'm not saying I wasn't on Twitter. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying I, I the, the weird holes I would go down were. Pluto TV and TikTok. <laughs> I watched a hundred episodes of the love, Adams family. Love boat. <laughs> and love boat. <laughs> so I oh, wasn't yeah. the phone there, is not okay? your friend. I was on the other end of the house in the broom closet. Okay. Yeah, it was bad. No TV. It was bad. <laughs> well, listen, I, I actually I'm only good for about 40 minutes and I gotta go lie down. So um how would you like to wrap this up? Is there stuff you'd like to tell people before I let you go? And I'm gonna do a little COVID wrap up here on all the numbers. They're just we're in, we're in it, folks. Yeah. It's a mess. It's a mess. Yeah. Whatever we're doing, it's not working. So. I think that's a really good point to end on. I, I would encourage or challenge anyone that believes that what you're being told right now, the, the sort of narrative that you need to wear a mask and stay at home and keep away from people and close the schools, keep the businesses, all of, all of that. If you believe that that is actually good and that we should be following that, ask yourself, it's been 10 months. How has that been working? Maybe it's time to follow a different path. Maybe it's time to do something different. We are not doing well. We are not doing well by any stretch of the imagination and by any measurement uh, measuring stick. Right. Not in terms of coronavirus cases, illnesses and deaths, not in terms of our economic growth and success, not in terms of our social lives, our psychological and emotional well being, our addiction recidivism rates, our suicide rates our coronary bypass surgery avoidance rate. And you go on and on and on. Every single metric is in the toilet right now. Yes. We yes. need to do something different. Now, you argue with me about what the right or wrong answer is, fine. You know, inpatient treatment, outpatient, or what types of, okay, fine. But we need to change this game because this is endless. If we continue down this path, it is never gonna end, ever. And that is a bad, bad state of affairs because once a human being can no longer either live spontaneously by going out and grabbing a coffee with his friend because he feels like it or plan for his future, meaning a wedding, a vacation, a graduation, if both of those ends of our human existence are forbidden, then we're not living anymore. And at some point you have to ask yourself, what is the point of our life? Is it to live fully? Or is it to just survive like a dog, throwing himself a bone and then going and sitting in his little box and sleeping at night? That's not the life that I want. If you want that life, fine. I don't, I don't think many people do. We've got to change this up. And I have to tell you, lying in bed, taking, being an injury, you know, a casualty of battle, 
to also have that going on is too much. It's just too much suffering. It's ridiculous. It's unnecessary. Yeah, mm. I, I the public health. I'm I'm asking for the public health to do the just just the fault three things. Stop with the maudlin messaging. Your job is to motivate people to do the right thing. We know how to do that. We learned in the AIDS epidemic how to do that. Where did you lose track of that? You need humor. You need narrative. You need a relatable source. And you tell a story and you get people to follow along with you. Number one. Number two, there are neighborhoods in Southern California that are getting eviscerated. Go find out what's going on there and change it. Find out what, don't claim what the problem is. Prove what the problem is. Do something about it. Number three, educate the public about how to treat their illness so they don't go to the ER, they don't go to the hospital, they use all the, uh, the telemedicine and the at-home therapeutics that are available and so good and kept me out of the hospital. They should be pushing that from every hilltop. Those are the three things that can change things. I agree with you. I think if only <laughs> we were being told what is going to make us actually healthy and safe, such as supplements, such as, you know, you name it, hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, budesonate, azithromycin. I, I don't care. This is not an issue about medical you know, argument. Yeah. But, yeah. but there are things that we know are helpful. Going outside, getting vitamin D, sunlight, exercise, avoiding the alcohol, the drugs. These are the messages that we should be putting on the, the, the billboards and the uh, yes. light facilities around the, uh, the freeways rather than what uh, Warden Newsom is doing, which is wear your mask, stay at home, as if people haven't heard that a million times already, and it just scares them further. Right. Give out positive messages based in reality, based in fact, based in science. That is not a very high bar for a public health and, department to do, and, and right. they're not and, doing it. Yeah, and by the way, if you're in your 20s, you're going to get the flu and be fine. If you're in exactly. mid-60s like me, you don't want this thing. Get the vaccine. Protect yourself. That's it. It's that simple. It's not complicated. No. And this information has been known for nine, maybe 10 months, and it yeah. still is being withheld. It, it's, it's baffling. Baffling. Me. It's truly baffling. That, that, that's, I'm just, that's my thing. I walk around confused. Like, what, what are they doing? And, and no change in direction. No adjustment Nothing. of course. Nothing. More people, are de more people are dead. So what do we do? We just lock down further. It reminds me of the whole thing with the school <laughs> system. We had horrible grades the last 10 years after increasing funding. So what do we need to do? We need to increase funding again. Yeah. Maybe the problem isn't the lack of funding. Right. Well, the homeless thing, I can tell you for sure, is the laws. Oh, my goodness. Are... Have you seen the Venice, Sepulveda, Venice? I, my the, goodness. You can't help these Two people. Two rows of camps now. Two the rows laws, of tents. The laws will not allow you to help these I folks. Know. They prevent because of this, you from this doing your California work. California court decision. I know. Oh, my God. They're blocked. They can't do anything about it until we get that decision overthrown. And meanwhile, they're just camped out in rows and rows and rows. You know, interesting point I just want to make. Have you ever heard of or seen a homeless person dead or even hospitalized with coronavirus? I have. Packed, filthy, no, I no mask, I, I IV have, drug I use. Because have. Have I maybe there's one or two, but I haven't seen much well, about that. I, I, and I, in fact, was sort of watching it kind of carefully. I, I work with some people downtown and stuff. And I think mm. the bottom line is they're outside. <laughs> That's the bottom line. They're in the sun. And, and that makes a big difference. That, that, oh. is, that you're way better Socially off. Socially distanced. It, it, when, when they would go into Amazing. the centers, that's when they would get it. So when right. you're outside, and, and there's a bit of social distancing going on automatically. So, yeah. Isn't that, Isn't that interesting? Yeah. If we were just all outdoors, we'd probably be much better off. Thank you. All right, Dr. Mark right. McDonald at MMC, Donald MD at M McDonald MD. And the, uh, I want to give the... Um, the website AFLDS.com and MarkMcDonaldMD.com. Thank you for spending a little time with me. Thanks, Dr. Drew. Right. Thanks, Susan. Talk Appreciated soon. it. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. It's interesting to me how, um, you know, I just saw some of his stuff and I thought, well, that's interesting. Somebody's saying something interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, it turns out he got a lot of interesting But also everybody needs to understand. <laughs> we don't, we're not saying that we have the exact views that he does. We we believe in masks. We want everybody socially I want distanced. Conversation. Yeah, it's I, not. We're not promoting a right wing agenda. No. We're not or left or whatever. A no. Anti but everybody has a right to make their own decision, and we're just Drew just really like wanted a psychiatrist to you know. Well, all I know is California is a catastrophe. It's failing miserably, and we need to think about alternative ways of doing things. That's it. I'm sick at home in bed because of the failures of the vaccine distribution program and the public health officials here in this county. Complete abject failure. And I'm injured because of it. And I don't want you to get sick because of it. You need to get the vaccine. Uh, again, if you're in a risk category. If you're young, 
It's going to be the flu. Keep your distance. It's not fun, but it's not that big. It's not a big deal unless you have obesity. Then it's a different thing. Uh, Don't go to a hospital unless you really need to. Yeah. So we speak with an MD.com. Is that what we're using, Susan? Speak with an MD. Yeah. Speak with an MD.com is a place you can get all the uh, uh, information on the medications and they will prescribe the medications to you. Uh, let's see. What else? We're going to look at the COVID tracking system. Yes. Let's do that. So, uh, LA County right now, we are, and we've been in the tens of thousands every day. Good job here. Really doing a great job. Orange County is getting killed pretty bad too. They were about three thousand. Used to be like two. Well, let, let me, again. Let me just say that when when Orange County had four hundred cases a day, it was cataclysmic. It was grim. A grim milestone. Four hundred cases. They're at three thousand now. Is this like grim? Is this grimmer? I, I I've lost track. I I, I don't understand. It, it's it's the again the panic, the pornography around panic makes it impossible to judge where we are. So there is the uh, national data right now. Uh, as, as you last see, last 90 days, yeah. you want a full range? Yeah, just for a second. Yeah, see, we're in a big, big outbreak. Uh, the hospitalization, uh, good news is, is not, uh, is well, it's double up. Yeah. But the death rate is not that much higher given the hospitalization rate. So, again, it's nasty, but we continue to do well in terms of peeping, keeping people alive with this people thing. people in the hospital, over 100. Yeah, I mean, that's a massive outbreak. Go back to 90 days. I mean, it's a huge, huge it outbreak. Is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, we are, we are, and you do not well, want this But we expected that in the winter because everybody's inside. Well, again, I thought I thought it was catastrophic in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> we needed a, we need. Drew, Drew I, we know. We I, again, I can't, well. I couldn't judge what was going on now. I'm trying to judge it. Um, I think, I think it's nasty. I think it's nasty, and I think you don't want this thing, and I think you need to protect yourself. Uh, how you do that, uh, I think it's everyone knows to, what to it's do. It's up to you. Yeah, but yeah, but it's not perfect. Else. I'm here to tell you it's not perfect. I uh, Let's go to California. Uh, it's not perfect. I you know I, was, I wear it with a mask on all the time, and I got it. I, yeah. I probably got well, it at the hospital. Well, you got that. It's that crappy one I and bought And as you. I said, I'm going to still wear the mask just to signal because I have no alternative. So there we go. California sort of coming down a little bit, but it's still. You can get one of those sparkly ones. Generally plateaued. Uh, the big problem in this data you're looking at here is that hospitalization rate, which is crazy high. Not the pink, the blue. The blue, yeah. That's crazy, crazy numbers. Um, well, and they were saying that our hospitals were full. Yeah, and they're not doing anything to uh, increase or expand the staffing. I've offered myself <laughs> as a volunteer. Go to New York. Let's see what New York looks like, because that's where I'm going to end up volunteering. Let's see. Where's the? Skip oh, let me go back to the restream. See if we have any questions going on. Some people really did not like that guy. Why? Why do you? They don't like him? Kelly Victory. They don't like this attitude because they're all being, you know, super careful. But but help me understand how we would change our attitude. How, how what we would do with his point of view that would make it better? Help me understand that. Uh, <coughs> again, this is about. I don't like that cough, Susan. That bugs me. I just choked on my spit. Okay, good. Because I need some water. So please, if you object to what he was saying, get on the restream here and tell me what what do you think he should do, what we should do to adjust that position he had. Um, well, listen, he has a he's a psychiatrist. He yeah. deals with the human brain and yeah, he's yeah. trying to explain why he thinks like he thinks. Is that New York there you have up? Yeah. So yeah. New York is uh, in it, but the hospitalization death rate remarkably low given how big the outbreak is. Because um, they're ready for it. <coughs> but again, I um uh, I will go in there and uh, do some work for them. Yeah, the deaths are really low. Uh, yeah, they're going up, but they're low compared to the intensity of the outbreak. So well, Yeah, look at they were really low in the summer. Yeah, no, it's look whatever New York is doing, it's working. Why don't we go look in California what they're doing? Uh, let's see. He sounds like B. He might know. I'd Hickey, I don't think he's a flat earther. Uh, point of view. Let's see. If you can't listen to somebody else's point of view, because you yeah, I, I want to know, but I want to know specifically from people that object to it what they'd like to see different, or what kind of point of view they would like to hear from, um, or how we would adjust what he said. Nikki Pickles liked him. Uh, Thank you, Nikki. Do not wear the mask just to signal. The exact problem with you should know better the mask for at least four months as I'm free of disease. Uh, I don't need to wear a mask. There's but no he, reason for wearing a mask. I've had my antibodies tested. I am immune. I am immune to COVID. I wonder but if I'm you going get to wear like a mask hat that says so, so I, I don't COVID. have to conflict with people <laughs> and I don't want to make them uncomfortable. Can we get you a hat I am that immune. Just says I, I had COVID 19? Who's that? Oh, yeah. Get we're, you a hat. We're, uh, yeah. Yeah. Or and, and as I said, I'm taking my Aditic score every two weeks to four weeks to figure out when that immunity drops off, and I will take the vaccine at that point. 
and I will be immune again. And I will keep wearing the mask if I have to, to keep people comfortable. That's fine with me. I'll do whatever I have to do. Miss Dunn wants to know if you've had a hug since you caught it. <laughs> uh, uh, he got a hug last night, Miss Dunn. Let's see. I'm trying to read your stuff. I'm hugging him again. So, uh, yeah. So, so upset you was he said Trump only tells little lies and he spoke the truth to power. Yeah, but uh, okay. Disagree with that. That's fine. We know Trump lies. That's it, period. Joshua, I love liberals. I love radical right. I love all my friends who have their opinions. I let them all <coughs> say whatever they feel like. <coughs> I don't believe me. And it, it this is not about politics. Uh, John Paul, I don't know what you're talking about, the scientific method. Uh, what is your hypothesis and what kind of null hypothesis did you create? And what was your statistical analysis to prove that null hypothesis? What was the construct of your experiment? That's the scientific method. Uh, it is really sad what happened today, though. I gotta admit. Oh, it's terrible. Everything's terrible. It, it, this look, we is a mess right now. This is a mess, uh, and well, we need to do better. Wouldn't you expect? That's why right I said I, I liked Biden's speech today. I thought I thought it was decently unified. He took a couple shots, but it's fine. Uh, I thought I thought he was soothing, and he sort of hit the right tone, and good for him. And uh, it makes us feel like somebody's stepping in that might be able to get us through this. So. Uh, all right. Everybody is, uh, giving me no. All science is that method. Correct. Everything else is conjecture. Correct. That is true. Uh, and, but a lot of science is done poorly. As you know, people rarely do a null hypothesis. There's a lot of P mining. Uh, a lot of, a lot of crazy, uh, assumptions are built into many of the, uh, uh hypotheses. Yeah. So particularly in biological sciences where I've been working for 40 years. Can we look at Florida? Sure. Go ahead, let's see it. Why? Because if Cal this is California. Oh, no, this is New York. Yeah. But we looked at California. Let's look at Florida. I'm just curious. We haven't done this in a while. so. Um, Vince, I took ivermectin. Susan took ivermectin. Uh, you can get it at um, speaktoanmd.com. It's uh, worldwide being used massively right now. So how many hospitalizations were in California? <laughs> what did we say? Uh, let me look it up. Hold on. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, the charts are clearly a lot. Uh, so Florida's wide open, and they're having, is that Florida there? Yeah, the 6,000 so hospitalizations. 25,000, 22,000 in California. So we had 6,000 in Florida, yeah. which is full of old people. And wide open. Yeah. So whatever. They is should Disneyland still open? Yep. Somebody then, should go down and find out why that is, and then bring that to because California. Because they're outside. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. They're living their lives. They're not all told to stay inside. And it's also warm in Florida, too. you got to remember that. Okay. I'm feeling uh, exhausted and a little irritable. So. But it's it just makes you wonder if we're doing the right thing. Uh, we're not. We're clearly not. There's abject failure in this state. Abject failure. Thank you, Tim, for the saying it's a good show. It always makes me nervous when the first thing the, the guest said is they don't like to wear a mask. My my hair kind of curls. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, oh, that, that's God. that's up to him. That, listen, he he's not he's going to get sick. If he, that, what's going to happen he is he's going to get sick. And he doesn't that, care. He doesn't care. He's not going to like this. Believe me, this is not a fun thing. Trust <laughs> me. I wish that he would wear the mask. And by the way, if he gets the vaccine, he doesn't have to wear the mask. And, that's uh, right. So you know. We yeah it's it's just been every time I I didn't really realize that he was against the mask so just so you know I'm not nor I'm is gonna Dr. wear a mask Jim. even though I'm I don't, still gonna wear one I haven't had even the vaccine. though I don't need one I'm gonna wear one yeah yeah so I'm gonna do it to to, to signal virtue well That's now fine. though you know what you can do now Drew you can get one of those cool ones like the bandana or you can wear like the the little neck gaiter. Let's do it. Get me some nice. Get me some nice. Uh, People can shit on you, but you can say I had a mask on. Whatever. You're right. You're right. That'd be nice because I don't like. I don't like them around my ears and stuff. I no, don't we'll get them. you little neck gaiters and then you know. Yeah, Vince, I, you wore a mask out sick. So did I, and I wore I wore it fastidiously. I want very carefully wore my mask. Uh, or we could get you the mask that says I had COVID nineteen. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I'm I'm antibody positive. But you're still wearing. Then you can put it under your nose. I, I don't want to do that to people. <laughs> uh, there's I'm no sorry. proof from immunity from disease means you can't spread the virus. There is JH. There's no infectious disease on earth for which you have a high antibody response that you can then transmit it. It does not exist. And it's been proven clearly. 
not to exist in this disease. Now, if my antibodies fall and I acquire some version of it months down the line, that's an issue. And that's why I'm going to be monitoring it very carefully. You cannot transmit it with it once you've had the high level antibody response. Does not happen. Does not happen. So you can let that one go. Uh, that's very clear. That is very clear. I slept clear. with him last now, night, so we'll what we, know. What we don't know is whether somebody who's vaccinated might be able to get a low-level uh, sort of uh, transmission. That is a viable concern that people should be thinking about. But in terms of the high antibody titer folks like me, that's it. We're done for the time being. For the time being. He still sh he still shows positive. On I'll show test. positive for a long time. So weird. Uh, I behaved recklessly, Alex said. In what way did I behave recklessly? I wore my mask religiously. I only was around my family. I locked down in my home. Where was the rec when I when I traveled? I traveled <laughs> religiously with a mask and went to COVID bubbles and and quarantined when I got where I went. Where is the recklessness? And quarantine. When where we got is back. the recklessness? Please tell me. Please tell me. He waited a week before he went to back to work. Of course, of course. I did everything the way you're supposed to do it, and I got COVID. That's the way it works. Uh, I wish I hadn't. Uh, I, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's nasty. It's a really horrible illness. I'm injured. I'm not well. I'm going to have to go to bed right now after this. Um, and that's that. I but don't know, Wiz Chris, what's up with the glue stick? Thank they, you they so much. Eat it? So, yeah, don't eat, don't eat glue. Okay, is there anything else anybody wants to talk about before I go? Thanks, everybody, for chiming in here. We, um, we're going to have a couple days hey, off. And by the way, you, uh, we are? Mm-hmm. Okay. You guys have any suggestions for guests? I'm I'm open to it. So you know, send us your suggestions. Well, we've and, got uh, that. We've got Justin. We moved him to next week. Is he I, is he a right wing guy? Is that going to be seen as a conservative? He's the dude? one that Andrew Ash Ashkazvili. Ashkazvili. Yeah. See. Oh no. He just he just actually said it. Did you say Justin Hart? He was supposed to come um, today, but he was going in a hot air balloon with his wife. So he for her birthday, and I said great. So next Tuesday, I have him set up. Alec, and then Monday, Alec, be clear can... on your criticism. Complicit in what? Make it clear, oh, or I'm, or that, I'm gonna, or I'm gonna block you. Yeah. Brett Weinstein is a way right guy. So Michaela Peterson, that could be interesting. But uh, that... Alex Berenson has been on before, you know, you know. But you guys wanted some more. I got all... Justin Hart. We're gonna we'll do a Zoom party on Monday. We'll have your Zoomers on. Uh, opinion on ivermectin, Heather. I took it. Susan took it. Uh, I didn't it like me. it. It made it, my stomach. It, but it helped me. It helped me. But I didn't get it. I'm COVID free okay. so far. I think. I mean, I I went to I went into Goodbye. the master last night. So, uh, Phil Kirpin, uh, Andrew is also asking us for. Why is California failing? That needs to be answered, Jason. That is exactly why they need to answer that question. Is it that they didn't get the the buy-in by the population because their messaging was so awful, or is it that their actual strategy is wrong? Or that those communities were, which are being hit so the hardest, there's something going on there they haven't identified yet because they've not tried. This is what needs to be answered. Um, New York City Commission, who, who are you thinking of? Um, can, Chef Andrew Gruel. A tube trance. Uh, get the vaccine. You do not want this. Get the vaccine. Get the vaccine. Ricky Gervais. I if don't you're know young, if you probably don't have to worry about this. Um, it's not that big a deal if you're in your 20s, you get the flu. But if you're in a risk category like myself, get the vaccine. Find a way to get yeah, it. Yeah, this will... Mm. <laughs> I'm going to get it. Somebody's asking for a neurologist. Um, if we have a neurologist that's good at speaking, sure, by all means. Uh, Who do we know? Yes, the new strain from the UK has hit the US and is probably going to be the predominant strain here. The more significant concern, though, is the strains that are going to be hidden from the vaccine or even my immune. So I have a broad immune response where I have lots of proteins that I'm reacting to, which uh, puts me in a really good position, even with some of the more novel, novel viruses that are evolving in Europe. But we're going to have to keep... Look, this is... When you tramp down on a virus, it evolves. It changes. It mutates. And we're going to have to chase it. It's going to be challenging. Russell Brand. Russell will be great. He owes us one. I have his publicist phone number. Okay. All right, Susan, I'm I'm it. You know, I'm running at the end of my. I wonder if he'd do it. Susan. Okay. We, when I, once I run out of steam, I'm we have to hit for the door because I really get tired Haberman fast. Andrew Haberman is a neurologist. And uh, where does he practice? Yeah, you got to send information. What does complicit mean? What does that mean? I don't know. I was going to ask you. I don't know what that means. It means you're a dick, Drew. I guess so. <laughs> Wim Hof. That would be interesting. Theo Vaughn, I've asked him. He said he'd do it. 
but I he's hard to. I'll uh, I'll put that on my list. Uh, Brett Weinstein is not what I call progressive. He's smart. I love listening to him, but he's pretty he's pretty uh, anti progressive. Doctor uh, Drunken Uncle, somebody just called you. <laughs> Casey, thanks, Casey. I know we're we. Tyrus is back on. He's in New York and he's doing fine. Dr. Bruce H. <laughs> he's an easy book. We can get Dr. Bruce H. Did you talk to Dr. Bruce H. Mm -hmm. this week? I did. Okay. How is he? Uh, freaking out a little bit. Yeah, I bet. Did he get a Did he get a vaccine? I don't think so. Yet. Really. He works in the ER. He's not been working in the ER lately, so I don't think he... So that's ridiculous. He got, it. Maybe he got it. Don't they want him back? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so weird. So Ben Shapiro. Well, they want Dr. Bruce, so that'd be great. Bruce would be great. Bruce is right-leaning, so... I know, you guys. <laughs> I want some I want some left-leaners, too, but unfortunately, they just don't bring the numbers, and I, I don't do it on purpose, but it's... <sighs> I don't have a problem which way they lean. I just want to have a conversation and not feel like we're being attacked. Jimbo, how would you characterize Brett Weinstein then? Because I, I know he's always attacking post-structuralism, always. And that's sort of the... I mean, he's a liberal. He's an old traditional liberal, but he's not a progressive. Barbara Ferrer. <laughs> LOL. I agree, LOL. Okay, Andrew Yang. We could work on that. You understand? I can't. I can't speak anymore. I'm too short of breath. Okay, go. Okay, we'll see I'm you next time. I'm gonna just pay, play some so ads and keep okay. writing down names of things. You guys can okay. keep talking out there. See you soon. Talk. Headlines have become uh, it's sickening. They become poisonous. Dissecting headlines. Defying state orders. Sheriff Bianco not enforcing what the governor is saying. Dialed in with decision makers. Clarify what you actually meant. Get the answers you need. The beginning of this, we were told, don't wear a mask. Is this really helping? Expect a different kind of newscast. Box 11 News Special Report. Weeknights at 7. I am so grateful for our friends at Blue Microphones. Not only have they completely changed what our show sounds like, they've given me headphones so I can monitor things better. This is the mic for millions of creative people, and now I know why. I'm so grateful for them completely changing the quality of our audio. You'll find blue mics like Yeti and the mouse, which we're using here, both in pro studios and home studios, all literally all over the world. Their popular Yeti caster is a blue Yeti microphone, plus a boom arm system that's behind many of your favorite podcasts. I see run into them all the time, and now I know why. If you've ever thought about creating your own podcast or YouTube channel, Blue can make you sound and look great. Just visit bluemike.com and click get started and you can start telling your story.